All right, we're going to take a quick look at the uh, slideshow that was posted for the TFCon Chicago 2014 third-party panel. These were posted online by TFW2005.com. First one they talk about is Octavarite Forge, which is the company behind uh, the uh, BMOG line from Trent Troop. And they have a whole line of Battle Beast-like figures that are coming out. These are going to be 3D printed. Uh, you can get them from Shapeways, either in color, in sandstone, as single pieces, or as uh, one single color in a uh, printed plastic. And those have uh, arms that are on 5mm ports, which makes them a little more poseable. And you can see they also have a spot on the chest where you can put a uh, rub sticker. Uh, I believe that uh, Repro Labels actually makes the replacement rub stickers for Battle Beasts. So you could put them on these and choose whether you want them to be wood, fire, water, or whatever. Here's the Atomic Allosaur, the Rampager Rex, Fetid Fly, Stab Happy Stegosaurus, Stalwart uh, Styracosaur, Titanic Triceratops, Terrifying Tyrannosaurus, and here they are in the, uh, looks like they're in their printed state there, done as a group shot. Also, there's Candor the Cola Warrior, and Bob the Insecticon. Some of the uh, accessories that are coming out from uh, Octavite on their Shapeway store include this little uh, uh, pistol, which is the gun mode of six shot as a five millimeter handle weapon for your Transformers. Also, they did this little Twilight Pony figure, which is a battle beast done for uh, uh, My Little Pony. Unfortunately, right now, Hasbro's policy on their uh, super fan art page is that they do not accept crossovers between any two of their properties, so they won't take a battle beast My Little Pony. But you can still get it just on normal Shapeways. Uh, from... BMOG, we have new images of their 8-bot Retroid kit. This is the, uh, I think, the third set that's coming out from them, and it will have uh, lots of accessories that can be combined in two different modes as different robots. Here we see 8-bot and Retroid, depending on how you assemble it. Same pieces, just put together in different ways. Play With This 2 is a new company that was announced about a month ago, being put together by uh, Rick Alvarez, and uh, he has quite a few friends from Hasbro who are now working with him at this company. They have their Headshots line, which are replacement heads for six-inch tall articulated figures. Uh, each artist has uh, three different heads that they'll be making in their first run, so here's like the three from Steve Redinger. Uh, the middle one there looks a lot like the... Uh, demon from the uh, video game Diablo. I think he said that the bottom one is a female pilot named Madwing, who was named after his daughter, Madeline Wing. Uh, let's see. Here's the second shot where I, Craig Christensen includes Blackjack, which is actually a Transformer name, Moon Unit, who I don't recognize, and Xandu, which looks a lot like the uh, Xanozan from The Last Starfighter. Here's the third set that includes Talix, Gentleman Fantastico MD, and uh, Maku, which uh, obviously is their company logo, a cool horse uh, or uh, unicorn head, and an Easter Island statue head. These are done by Rick Alvarez and Ken Christensen. The uh, figures they'll be doing, which are going to be coming probably out as part of a Kickstarter initiative at the beginning of the year, are these six inch tall articulated uh, spacemen in armor that have transforming drone sidekicks. Uh, they have said that these are the first wave have a lot of pretender homages in them. They've said that and it uh, this one here for instance is going to end up being painted like uh, Cloud Burst from the Generation 1 Pretender, the Autobot. Here you can see a little bit about the accessories for him. And here's the transforming tech drone, which I guess you could say is kind of like a Minicon or a Legends figure or anything like that. Um, and it does combine with the bigger figure. 
because the bigger figure is just a highly articulated, uh, well armored uh, man in a spacesuit. There's one of the villains from the line called Desolator. It um, will come with uh, multiple heads. In fact, I'm told most of the figures are going to come with multiple heads and multiple hands in different poses, so you can uh, kind of customize them how you want. And they're going to be covered with lots of 5mm ports for adding accessories. Here's Desolator's tech drone, which turns from a little, I guess, tank or jet. It looks like a tank, I guess into a robot or combines with the uh, big figure as weapons. Here's Bloodbath, who's uh, very clearly inspired by the Pretender um, Bomb Burst, or Blood as he's called in, uh, in Japan. And you can see he has a 5mm weapon. And he, honestly, this mold reminds me a lot of a uh, Ramatith uh, Zoonoid from the Giver as well. And here's his uh, Tech Drone, which turns into a little jet. This is Boneyard, who they were teasing right up before the uh, TFCon convention, who is very similar to the uh, Pretender Grimlock, only just done much more extravagantly. And he comes with a sword and a gun that look very much inspired by G1 original Grimlock and Pretender Grimlock's weapons. This is Jetwash, who is obviously inspired by the Pretender Starscream shell. Uh, he also has big uh, wings on the back that aren't part of the Tectron, they're just part of the main figure, unlike the original. Um, I'm told that uh, this is actually a hero in the uh, line, so if you ever wanted to see what a heroic Starscream-like character would look like, this is kind of it. Um, also, the there will be a jet, tr a transforming jet partner for this. I'm not sure if it has a weapon mode, but it will have a transforming jet partner. Oh, also play with this too, did announce that Aaron Archer and Simon Furman were joining the team. So those are two big names over at Hasbro that uh, people might want to follow the uh, uh, for just because they're so famous for what the work they've done with Transformers before. Here's one of the designs of a villain that was done by Aaron Archer. He's called the Ancient Astronaut right now, and I think they're still working on a full name for it. And he's supposed to be an old hero who gets uh, infected with a uh, uh, alien when he defeats it from a bite and ends up uh, being possessed by the alien. And either a separate figure or as add-ons, you can use to turn him into this, which is your big tentacle monster from space, which just also happens to look quite a bit like the Pretender Octopunch, if you play it, put him together the right way and have the right deco of him. Uh, but it's also a big 5mm port, and I was thinking that the limbs on it remind me kind of uh, the Inhumanoid Tendril as well. So if they want to do a, uh, an homage to that, they could probably get away with that as well, with a lot of the same parts. Bad Cube uh, has been working on their uh, Masterpiece line with uh, minibots. They are the ones behind the Huff figure, and then they did uh, Brawny and Backland. Here are the figures themselves, very true to the G1 animation models. They are in fact heavy retools of each other though, so they don't uh, have a lot in common their surface detail. Uh, they also will have a lot of accessories available in an accessory pack, uh, alternate faces, weapons, a lot of stuff that was used in it, whatever episodes. Uh, looks like the all five wheels are changeable, the fuel tank is removable. And as you can see, it's a desi well-designed figure that can be used. You can actually hold up the MP10 Optimus Prime in vehicle mode. Uh, Braun has his drill, which he used in one episode. Uh, Outback has his trusty Decepticon detector. Um, yep, and there's more. They do fit inside the MP10 trailer. And here are all the scenes that they attempt to recreate using all the accessories. And they will have an accessory kit that looks like the Quinnison Journal, it comes with more bits and bobs. And they are coming out with four more figures in the uh, coming uh, year, so we'll be curious which figures those are. On the Gonix is the company that's been going through and doing its uh, version of Sunstreaker. As you can see here, it's coming along quite nicely. 
This is, even though it looks almost the same as Sideswipe in alternate mode, it is completely a, original design in its robot mode. You can see it actually has the uh, retractable weapons as part of the arm instead of having to put a new piece in. And those are the, uh, the pile drivers that were originally supposed to be part of uh, Sideswipe before the, uh, they accidentally swapped the bios on those characters back when they uh, came out in 1984. And here are the legs for uh, their version of Sunstreaker, the alt mode. And here it looks like they're going to be coming out with a Diaclone version in the red, which the original Sunstreaker was red in Diaclone. And then also it looks like they're teasing a possible, I don't know, it could be Dead End and Police Sunstreaker. Let's see, you got Spin Out and Drift King, and I don't know who the other two are called. Shapeshift Inc. is the guy who's the guys who are making a uh, bunch of legends size figures. They have a Heavy Metal and Sky Snake, which are uh, War for Cybertron versions of uh, Ironhide and Starscream. Uh, it also looks like they'll also be coming out with a Skywarp and a Thundercracker. They do have different weapons. Also, they uh, were looking at making a uh, Legends Optimus Prime from War for Cybertron. Uh, possibly some add-ons that will turn it into a Super Optimus Prime or a Ultra Magnus. They also announced legend-sized versions of the Combaticons that combine. You know what? These would be a lot better if they were just deluxes or bigger, if you ask me. But hey. And, uh, okay, we have uh, Vortex and Blastoff. We have Onslaught. Uh, they look a little super deformed almost in these photos. TFC Toys, of course, just came out with their Ares combiner. They completed that recently. And they're working on Prometheus with their... Uh, versions of the Protectobots. And here's the upcoming, uh, f their version of First Aid. Who, uh, yep, it has First Aid's head, definitely. It looks a little bit beefy for First Aid, but whatever works. I wonder if it'll have the big guns in the uh, vehicle mode that are that I love. And this, I guess, will be their version of Blades. And here he is in his alt mode. And you can put the, the uh, propellers on his arm uh, like uh, the Japanese uh, Cybertron Live Convoy figure. And here's the combined mode of Prometheus. Giga Power is the company that's been making the largest sized uh, Masterpiece Dinobots, and they're currently working on uh, Gutter, their version of Snarl. And here it is compared to the MP10 mold. Don't I can't tell if it has a light up sword or not. It looks like it's just chromed. Lots of 5mm ports, uh, weapon storage. Guitar coming soon. So a lot of people are looking forward to that. If they want the biggest, baddest Dinobots that are available, that's them. Bolt Forms is the company that's been working on some toys that are very G1 accurate but articulated and about scaled to Masterpiece. Their Megatron is a triple changer with uh, robot gun and tank modes. Here we see it next to MP10 Optimus Prime. I think it's just a tiny bit shorter at the head. I'm not sure. This is, doesn't look like the complete alternate mode, just bits of it. And here's their version of Motor Master called Lone Wolf. And he will be in a combiner. And you can see he's just about as big as Optimus Prime, which really throws him out of whack for scale uh, in vehicle mode, but uh, keeps him in robot mode accurate. Toy World is a company that made a couple of good announcements just before the uh, TFCon started. But the figure they're working on right now, I think it's just coming out, is their version of Snarl. It's called Roar. And they also have their version of Sludge coming out soon after that. And it will be indeed a combiner. Here's their version of Grimlock, which should probably be end up being the torso and a bit bigger than... Uh, the other uh, members of the Dinobot team. 
Uh, as I recall, the other ones are maybe ultra size, so I don't know if he's a leader or what, but they won't be much smaller than uh, the Masterpiece Grimlock. And here he is in his alt mode, which really looks pretty good. Hands look a little hidden there. I'm not sure if that's fully transformed. Um, but it's very, uh, looks like uh, the Masterpiece figure only done down to the uh, classic size. And here's a little teaser for the uh, their version of Slag in his alt mode. So we just don't know what Swoop looks like. Now, another thing coming out from uh, Toy World is this uh, figure they're calling Grant, which is a classics version of the Grand Maximus from the Master Force series. I'm told that he uh, comes with dry transfer labels in case they're, uh, you have a little trouble trying to peel them off. They're not peel, pe peel stickers, they're transfers. And uh, there's only a limited number. I think uh, TF Source has 180 that they're selling to the U.S. market. And also Chai Mung Mung has some available for order right now. Uh, there it's going for 120 bucks. And I think uh, TF Source actually gives free shipping on over 150, so if you throw in 30 more, you can get it for free shipping. And the figure itself stands about the size of a leader class um, uh, figure from Generations. I think it was uh, 22 or so centimeters tall. And it does have a transforming headmaster that turns right from a uh, little gran into the robot, no uh, cerebros middle uh, component. It does have the re uh, hidden guns that are on the uh, uh, G1 figure, but it has full articulation. DMY is a company that's been making some accessories lately. And here's one of the ones they did, which was an add-on kit for uh, the uh, Energon Superion. I think this is actually an add-on kit for the add-on kit for Energon Superion, actually. And they also did some other little bits and pieces here for uh, for the Optimus Prime figure. This one was the one they did for uh, the Generations uh, Double Dealer that added a missile to it. I think some other little bits and bobs. And it makes it a little more like the G1 Double Dealer in its final form. Big gun missile there and all sorts of stuff and the tank mode oh she even does a launcher mode it's kind of cool uh, they have a set of uh, shoulder missiles for the uh, Transformers Prime Ultra Magnus and they're working on a upgrade set for the Transformers Prime I believe it's the Voyager Megatron that will give it a more show accurate uh, weapon and some other pieces looks like I think that's the KFC sword that it has there, too. G.I. Eddie and Echo TF have their add-on set for the Fans Project M3 uh, Menasaur figure coming out, which makes them a little more G1 accurate. Uh, fills in some spots, gives it nicer elbows, weapons, that sort of thing. They'll be making test shots of it soon. Keith's Fantasy Club has quite a few uh, figures that are going to be coming out soon. One of their cool new figures coming out is called Crash Hog, which is their masterpiece version of Retgar. And there, of course, where there's a Retgar, there are Junkion repaints. And we're going to be getting Sanford and Waste or Delta, which these figures are actually not just made up. Um, Sanford is based on Grease Stain, one of the background characters from the 1986 Transformers movie. And Wastoid Delta is based on, uh, I think, Wastoid Gamma, who was also a background junkie on in the movie. They were two of the guys that were, I don't know, in the uh, dancing scene, waving their arms around. So he actually based the uh, mold tweaks for these two guys on those two characters. And the names were come up. Uh, Sanford was named by my wife when uh, Keith wanted a name for a character, and I came up with Waste or Delta and Crash Hog. The EAVA Metal, or Evy Metal, line has the uh, uh, transistor figure that's going to be coming out soon with its metallic finish. And it's a pretty uh, G1-accurate blaster in alt mode, 
Uh, you can see here it compared to the Masterpiece Soundwave. And it does fit all the uh, cassettes, although not all at once, but I think if it's like three at a time. It has the same ejection mechanism that's seen on the Masterpiece Soundwave. I think basically it just needs an uh, Autobot symbol on the chest. It does have nice articulated hands. And it comes with two rifles and two different head options. And I see they actually have Autobot symbols on their little figures. So I guess that's the first thing they do is stick repro labels on them. And he will come with the uh, big uh, speakers. I think were those in uh, Autobop or one of those episodes where he put those on the, his hands to boost his signal. So this looks like a figure that a lot of people are looking forward to. I think the only people who aren't getting it are those who don't collect Masterpiece or those who think that uh, Takara is going to cover them soon. But uh, I don't know if Takara is ever going to get around to it. X Transbots also has a lot of figures that are going to be coming out soon. They provided the exclusive for TFCon Chicago, who was called Axis. Axis was a black and purple repaint of Stax, the uh, Pipes homage, and he was supposed to be uh, Shafter's brother and also an homage to G1 Full Tilt, the little partner of Trypticon. You can see him compared to the Shafter masterpiece figure. He has all the uh, accessories and the face changing. Here are the actual uh, Mini Masters line from X Transbots, including Ollie and Sonic, their wheelie and uh, turbo figures. And coming out soon from them, I'm told these are going to be about the same size as the Masterpiece Starscream in robot mode. And Andres with Rimfire and the Swarm. Looks like uh, there's actually going to be, uh, I don't know if it's a three pack. Or if they're just going to be selling the two different ones, or you just buy one and don't put the Target Master on them to make the Swarm figures. But uh, Scourge and his Target Master, Fracas, his Brimfire. And also coming soon, the Master Mini Series will have a Brawn and an Outback, a Beachcomber, a Cosmos, and a Power Glide. And coming later from X Transbots is their Megatron inspired figure. Apollyon uh, MX-1. This figure is going to come with a lot of accessories, I'm told, like uh, uh, mind control helmets, a pistol that he used to kill Optimus Prime in the movie, uh, things like that. And he will be very much to scale with uh, Masterpiece 10 Optimus Prime. And he will have his gun mode. I'm told this is one of those that are so accurate they're going to have to end up uh, putting a uh, neon cap on the end of the barrel and on the end of the silencer that you have to remove yourself when you get it in stock. And here's all the uh, add-ons to make the uh, silencer of the stock and all that. Render form, the uh, masters of making heads for other people's third-party Transformers. Uh, they'll be looking at, uh, they were the ones who put together this Desaurus inspired head. And some weapons here. And they also did this Nightshade figure, which was their version of Darkwing. They made a replacement head for the Toy World Orion. It was a little more G1 accurate. And they did a special limited edition black version for the Orion uh, black version. Orionville. Uh, looks like they have a sword for it too. And they're also coming out with non-transforming comic book accurate heads for the Fans Project Code as uh, Chrome Dome from IDW. And they also have one for the Smart Robin for him to be uh, Brainstorm from IDW Comics. They'll be doing their Ultra Magnus inspired head for Steel Core, including a red version with a big weapon sword that will go on, that will match up well with the chest that comes with the Steel Core trailer. 
Here you can see the different variations of the uh, Ultra Magnus head for that Steel Core figure. They have two different molds, and then each has two different decos in gray or blue. Mastermind Creations has a lot of figures that will be coming out soon that uh, have been really impressing people. This is their Commodus, who is one of the uh, uh, Decepticons from the IDW comics. If you read those. And I'm told his uh, tank is based on Metal Slug, which in turn was based on the old Tank Police uh, series. So it would be nice if they made a Prowl deco of this, if you ask me. And there's an Anarchus, who is another one. I think he's one of the DJD, who turns into a Executioner's Chair. Here's a test shot of it. I think that's their uh, Predaqueen figure inside of it. Speaking of Predacons, here is their Fila Saber, who is the sixth member of the uh, Feral Wax team. He forms an arm so that Dive Bomb can actually form more of the body. And here's the uh, Saber Tooth Tiger helmet for Fila Saber, so it can look a bit more like the Pretender Catilla. And you see the uh, head actually comes off and forms a hand weapon when it's not being used in alternate mode. The Cynicus is a uh, transforming sniper rifle that they are going to be releasing. And coming soon, a Terminus Hexatron Reformed Continuum series. I don't know, I just want to see the uh, Brave, Ma uh, the, uh, Brave and the... Uh, uh, great shot decos. Uh, one of the exclusives that's available at TFCon is the special Azalea Asterisk mode, which is based on a uh, obscure deco that they were thinking of using for the IDW comics but didn't go with. Also, they have a Jagatron uh, figure coming out, which is their kind of version of a lockdown in the classic style. He will be based more with a bit of the uh, the G1, the Revenge of the Fallen, the animated, and the uh, movie figures all kind of combined, and yeah, come with a weapons locker. It looks like there's a head collection as well, and uh, lighting. The Royal Arsenal is a set of add-ons for the Feral Rex team that give them G1 style hand weapons. See, Leo, Dux, Fortis, Bovis, Talon, Tigress all have their weapons. Or just Fila Sabres, I'm not sure. But uh, yeah, definitely you can definitely make them look a little more G1 with these add-ons. Also announced is their Sphinx figure with a 6.5 inch tall robot mode. I don't know, this might make it a bit of a small uh, masterpiece. Planet X have been showing off their uh, new figures. They are the ones who did the uh, f uh, War for Cybertron Omega Supreme, and they also are working on the Dinobots. They already came out with their Kalos, which is Swoop, and just coming out soon is Neptune, which is their version of Sludge. And this is the first uh, images we've seen of a test shot of their version of Snarl. And in the robot mode... Maki Toys, uh, also a big, big company in the uh, field. Uh, they're getting ready for their Nemesis figure. And they've also just released Quantron, which is a big robot like their old uh, Giant Type 61. And coming soon will be their version of the Defensor, who you can see here has a Streetwise and Groove uh, figure with it. And here's the combined mode of the robot in a render. And it looks like this is going to be uh, their version of Tailgate. In Cybertronian mode, of course. It'll go well along with their version of Swerve that they released. The alternate mode looks very much inspired by the IDW comics. So if you want some guys to sit around drinking uh, around a bar, these are the figures for you. Oh, even comes with broken legs. 
All right, and we have Fans Project, who is another big name in the third-party Transformers community. They have uh, their they have their lost Exo Realm Columpio figure, and this is Kubrar. And then we have their Swoop uh, character, and from their. Uh, Function X line just released is Sigma L, who's their version of uh, Mindwipe. Coming up next should be their version of Skull Cruncher, who you can see here. And it looks like the uh, chest, they kind of did a thing where it ends up with two windows on the chest. I wonder if it's going to get the Optimus Prime recolor. A lot of people are looking forward to that. And here is the alt mode. And coming soon from them is a little teaser for their version of Dino King. I'm told this is going to be a six-member combiner with the shells, and it should be a little bit bigger than the M3. For all, this should be a really good uh, set of toys that are coming out, and I look forward to learning more of the details in coming weeks.